In this video, I want to use the Netflix series, The Queen's Gambit, to talk about men, women, and chess. Remarkably, this is a very successful series, and of course, built into it is this idea of feminism and women's empowerment. Part of the appeal of the series is the idea that you've got this young woman in her 20s who is so good that she keeps thrashing every male grandmaster in sight, eventually defeating the world champion. And of course, the movie is, uh, the series is infused with the old, you know, be all that you want to be and you can become anything you want to be. And um, there are just all these social obstacles keeping women behind and blah, blah, blah. Now, just to illustrate how removed all of this is from reality, I recognize this is a series, but my point is it, it appeals to fantasy because we don't discuss what is really true. In reality, we have a very bizarre phenomenon, which is in chess. First of all, there is a chess world champion, um, Magnus Carlsen, and there is a women's world champion. Now let's think about this. Why do we even have a women's chess tournament at all? Um, in other sports, we have male and female um, playing separately, but that's because there's a physical difference in strength between men and women. But is there an intellectual difference? Are men smarter than women? Do you need separate tournaments so women can have their own sort of affirmative action champion? Uh, that doesn't, wouldn't seem to be the case. But the truth of it is um, that you've got very few women who play chess at the very top level. Uh, years and years ago, there was um, uh, two Bulgarian sisters who were in the top 100. Uh, here is a list. This is from the International Chess Association the FIDE list, so-called, of the 100 top players in chess in the world. Let's scroll down the list. Uh, every single name except one is, is male. There's only one woman, Yifan of China, who's in the top 100, and she's basically somewhere between 90 and 100. She's sort of at the bottom, very bottom of this list. Now, why is this? Um, the reason this is a topic, by the way, rarely discussed in chess, I subscribe to chess.com. This is like a taboo subject uh, because even chess has become politically correct. But the true explanation is not just that, not that men are smarter than women. Men and women have the same average IQ 100, but the bell curves are different. The distribution, if you will, is different. And when the way to put it in the simplest form is that, is that there are more male geniuses at the one end of the bell curve and there, is, there are more stupid guys at the other end of the bell curve. So men are overrepresented, you might say, both in the genius category and in the retardation category, uh, which might, by, by the way, help to explain why many violent crimes are perpetrated by men. Um, they are perpetrated by very low IQ men. Women congregate more in the middle. They're more, you may say, in the normal range. Uh, and this is not to say that there aren't individual geniuses. Of course, there are. And Beth Harmon, the star of this show, could be one of those. But the fact that she is successful means that she is at that tail end of the bell curve. And it's not because some social ideology is keeping women down. So the point I want to make is we can enjoy the series. Uh, we can enjoy this kind of fictional portrait of sort of young woman kind of beats the odds and beats everybody in sight but we shouldn't confuse it with reality.